Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. We love chatting with entrepreneurs on this show, best hour of their day. And I think, you know, any affiliate owner at heart is an entrepreneur, but I also like to tell Coaches, they are entrepreneurs as well. I think the misconception out there is, well, I need to have, you know, I can't have a real job. I need to be, you know, chasing after this thing, hustling all the time. And that's certainly one aspect of it. But I think anyone listening, if they decide I'm going to chase after my dreams, even if they're holding on to their nine to five, like, congratulations, you're an entrepreneur. But you, Cassandra, is it Cassandra or Cassandra? Tomato, tomato. (laughs) Which do you prefer? I prefer Cassandra, but like Wayne's World. Yeah. Do you know Wayne's World? Oh, you're too young to know Wayne's World, aren't you? I, I've I've never actually seen it, but <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's pause this episode. Let's go watch Wayne's World together. But there's Cassandra. That's like the fancy way. That's like saying aunt. Yes. Of it's, aunt. It's the fancy way. You you it's fancy, but it's all good. Cassandra, you are the founder of what people will know as the grit stick, but your company is pure grit fitness, correct? That is correct. Yes. And, you know, you are an entrepreneur prior to that, or actually concurrently, you're also an RN, uh, life coach, et cetera. Yes. Like all the things, all the things there. But how did you first, let me ask you this. What in your life pushed you to become an entrepreneur? I, you know, that's, as I reflect back on my childhood, I think I was always a little entrepreneur at heart. Uh, just looking back, I was, I was constantly, I've just always had this brain that doesn't shut off, uh, constantly, uh, trying to improve things, trying to fix things. I, there was multiple times as a little girl that I would go up to my brothers with this, what I thought was a brilliant idea. Uh, for example, when I was like, I don't know, I was probably like 10 years old, but I went to, to my brothers, uh, and I was like, wouldn't it just be amazing if you could stick, you know, if we could create a machine that was in the freezer that you could just press um, like you were getting water, but the, you could put like fruit and milk and everything and it would make your smoothie right there and it'd just come out of the refrigerator. And That's a great idea. I want one of those. Can I, where can I get that? It's really a good idea. And then, so Anyways, they, and they're both um, engineers now, both of my brothers are. So they, they went into, and they're, you know, went into the mechanics of it and now would be get all gunky. And anyways, long story short, I've kind of always had a brain like that. So when I see an issue or I see something, you know, I try and fix it. And so that's how the grit stick came about. Um, and I've just always, I've always been one of those people that I like making my own schedule and I like doing my own thing and not necessarily really being told what to do. (laughs) A big part of being an entrepreneur, right? We're, we're, we're bucking the system, if you will, and saying, Hey, we see all of you going to work. We don't want to do that. But I also think, you know, that's a great idea because, you know, there's that famous expression of like, well, if you ask people back in the day, you know, what they want for transportation, they would have said a faster horse. No one was saying a car like, oh, there's all these problems that could arise. Of course, no different than your, you know, smoothie freezer. Yeah, Yeah, there's some problems. Let's work through them because that's a good idea. I told my wife, I was like, look, we have a microwave. It heats food up. I want something for when I overheat the food to bring it back down to the temperature I want. And she's like, yeah, it's called the refrigerator. And I said, no, I mean, I want like just 10 seconds. Like there should be a reverse microwave. Right. So, or like, or like a sensor or something on the microwave that where the food is getting too hot. That's a good idea. Bubble over that. It just stops, you know, because I can't do oatmeal. Like every time I make oatmeal, it explodes. It goes everywhere. So yeah. Having some sort of sensor or something that, well, I think there should be, a, yeah, now that we're talking about a sensor and also like your preference, it should know like, you know, like you can, there's many things that you can say like, okay, set it to my preference, set it to a, another user's preference. 
Same with the microwave. When I put in, you know, that I want to reheat this, it knows that I don't like it scalding hot. I think we're onto something. I think um, we, I think we, you know, need, that, need, think we need a chat later. <laughs> I think we need to come up with this and then bonus if it makes smoothies, you know? There you go. <laughs> so, so what was your first thought about this grit stick where you're like, okay, were you going to a box? Were you just training at a gym where you're like, people are using chalk. They're making a freaking mess everywhere. They can't travel with it because it looks like drugs. What yeah. are, what are, so what, what, what did I just nail it? Or did you have some other thoughts that went into it? That was several of them, but my first one as a, so yeah, so I started going to a box. Uh, I've, I've always been involved in sports my whole life, but never really got into like the Olympic lifts and the gymnastics and all that to where you needed chalk. So when I went to the box and I started doing CrossFit, I immediately became a chalk monster. But as a nurse, the first thing I saw was the sanitation issue mm. of everybody sticking their hands in that big old bucket and, you know, the bloody hands. I'm guilty as charged. I've stuck my bloody hands in the chalk bucket. I feel like people should have enough wherewithal to be like, okay. Like I've seen it where you go to stick your hand in chalk and there's clearly blood in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, let me go to the other chalk bucket. Like, it's not that you, you don't have to be that smart to not stick bloody hands in chalk. Obviously you did it. So maybe, I, maybe. I, I've done it. Well, you got to finish the wad, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Maybe I'm just not working that hard. So anyways, so yeah. So I saw these, I saw that, that issue in itself. I was like, that's pretty gross. And so, you know, started looking around to like other, you know, options as far as uh, carrying around my own chalk and, you know, all my friends had their little Ziploc baggie with the chalk block in it or the Tupperware container, but so that gets everywhere. And then I started coaching and saw all the other issues when it comes to mess around the gym because I'm having to clean it up now so you know like people sticking their chalk block on the J hook and then knocking it off and then stepping on it and then everybody's stepping on it yes it's like oh my gosh okay there's got to be a solution to this and so that's kind of how the whole idea of the grit stick was that's where it all started and what did the first iteration of it look like? Because right now you, you see a grit stick. And, you know, this is always fascinating to me because I've never been an inventor, right? Like, you know, yes, I have come up with the, you know, reducing heat machine, as I call it, the yeah. RHM. Um, but I would have no idea where to begin other than calling somebody smarter than me to do this. But even something like I, I see like the grit stick and I'm like, okay, it's not like super complex, but I wouldn't know where to begin. How do you even begin a, a, a concept like that? Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's a long process. So my first, my first design, so I went through multiple, um, designs. Uh, so my first design I got with a product engineer, I had the vision, I knew what I wanted. Um, and I originally wanted a, this, my, the whole grit stick actually was started out as a woman empowerment kind of deal uh, because I wanted one end to be like a chalk stick that twisted out like a lipstick and then the other end be a lipstick. And so that's why um, there's- the It'll be that big? No. It's big lipstick, I feel like. It, okay. was, it was smaller. So okay. yeah, like I said, there's been a lot of renditions of different designs. So anyways, going through the whole, working with my product engineering stuff, we, you know, just with the density of chalk and, you know, having it not crumble. Anyways, that's how we went with the salt shaker method, the shaking out the powdered chalk, shaking out like that, um, and the open compartment on the other end. So chalk in itself is already such a niche market that I didn't want to narrow it down even more by just targeting females. Well, so let's be clear. Some men would buy that. Yes, they would. But mostly females. Yes. Mostly females, yes. Yeah. I don't want to yeah, don't discriminate. But um, so that's why there's the open compartment on the other end. So you can still stick your lipstick. Yeah, but you can put your chapstick, you can put your pre-workout, you can put your post-workout, you can put your keys, head buds, whatever. Um, 
earbuds in there. And, uh, so yeah. So anyways, after going through several different designs, uh, actually had my first prototype about two, two and a half years later, uh, that long. So you've really been working on this for quite some time. So from like product idea to actual launch on the market was about three and a half years. Wow. Is that typical? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a process. It's a process. And so my first prototype was actually, uh, came from China and it was a lot smaller. Uh, the caps were really difficult to take on and off and I just wasn't happy with it. Uh, I was ready to launch, but I was like, you know, just the quality of this and working with China was a pain in the butt. And so I was like, I want to have this be made here in America. So that so they're made in the U S now. Yeah. Manufactured. Oh, that's awesome. With my two hands. <laughs> you're making, so you're making, like if someone orders a grit six, the one I've seen, you're literally making them. So do you, do you make them like where you currently are in your apartment there? I'm assembling them. Um, so my, I do have a little station here in my apartment where I have everything that I can assemble, but my main headquarters is actually in the garage, my childhood garage where I grew up. <laughs> so you have to go home. I mean, your parents are probably thrilled. They get to see you. Yes. My mom, my mom is my number one employee. She, I was going to say, you got to get mom and dad to just start putting these together when you're not there. You can whip those things out like crazy. She is, oh my, I'm so grateful for her. Like I had a 2,200 unit order that she helped me just like whip out. And so. How anyways, fast can your mom make one? Oh, like seconds. Less seconds. Two. Yeah. 2,200. Who ordered that? Uh, so we were in a subscription box. The right. Pick. So we were in the subscri a subscri a subscription box. And so, yeah, so that's, that's a, what that order was for. But Is it too much to ask? Are you near this station? Can we see you put one together? Um, I actually. I can... This would be a first for best hour. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Give me one second. All right. Here she goes. Play by play. Uh, Cassandra, Cassandra, my bad is, uh, and by the way, listeners, one of the things that Fern and I talk about with Best Hour is making sure you know your members' names accurately. So I can sit here and take Cassandra for an hour. turns out you know, she prefers to go by Cassandra. And if you do that to your members, it's a big deal. So ask them how they prefer their name. Somebody will tell you like Cassandra did, tomato, tomato, they care. You, they always care. It's their name. So, all right, Cassandra's gone. Like I said, if you while she's gone, go check out her personal Instagram. It is Casmarie underscore fit, C A S S M A R I underscore fit. And then, of course, uh, the grit stick is at grit underscore stick. So while she's gone, um, make sure you go check those out. And I'm excited to here she comes. I see her shadow. Okay. So if you're listening to this, go to our YouTube channel because you're going to be able to watch live in action. Can you pull the camera down just a tiny bit? There we go. Okay, here we go. So there's the tube. So where do you get those? So this tubing, so I have a die. It's um, where the aluminum tubing is extruded. So it's actually, the, everything is customized to fit. So this is actually, so my die is it's, that's the only measurement of this aluminum tubing that it's like unique to this tubing. I love that color. That is literally this is my, my favorite color. Yep. So what would you call that? What color is that? Uh like a cobalt blue. Cobalt? I usually call it Superman blue, but yeah, close. I, I same same principle, right? Right. So um this comes from uh Anaheim, California. So they're long tubes, so it gets extruded, all the, and they're about nine, 10 feet long. That gets shipped, those, that tubing gets shipped to my machinist who is in Washington. He cuts them to size, does all the tooling. Um, this is like where the carabiner shop goes. Yep. And um, it's still like um, kind of rough metal at that point, aluminum. Then he, 
sends these pieces to my anodizer and laser etcher because the logo is laser etched. It's not like a sticker. So then he sends that to Oregon where they do the anodizing, which is the color. They dip it um, to make it nice and shiny and pretty. And then they laser etch it. And then this piece, this aluminum tubing gets sent to me. At that point, I assemble. So it's, so it's already going from um, California to Washington to Oregon, now to Colorado where you are. Colorado where I am. So when people, I don't know, I think that's important. A lot of people are like, why do things cost X, Y, and Z? It's like shipping alone, you've sent it to three different places. Um, you know, you, 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 people are working on it as well. So yeah. if when, you know, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur until it's time to do entrepreneurial shit, as yes. we like to say. Yes, very true. <laughs> and going into this, I never would have known. Like, yeah, you're like, hey, just put some chalk in a tube and we're good. Meanwhile, you got people all over the West Coast doing this. Yes, yes. So so then I it comes to me. I do have like a little rig where it's a lot easier to put the plug in, but this is the plug that goes in the center so that you, it makes the two compartments. Okay. So I do have a, a mesh, like a, it's not a machine, but it's um, a little device that helps. I can do a lot at the same time. Right. Rather than just yeah. reach it with your fingers. It's like trying to find the keys in your car when you drop them between seats. Exactly. So then um, these are the caps that go on both ends. So just simply put those on like that, put the carabiner strap on. Carabiner. And then this cap is already made. So generally I would actually put the mesh screen in. So that's where the chalk comes out, obviously. Yeah. And then it comes with a sticker that you peel off just so the chalk's not going everywhere. And then there's a plug on top to help keep residual chalk from getting in the top. Then you put the chalk vial in, slip that in, take the cap off, and then there you go. Good to go, ready to go out in the mail. Ready to ship out and then I box it put it in its little nice little envelope and ship it out. And you're doing all the shipping yourself as well? Yes. Do you have a ship station account or something to make that a little easier? You I have ship station. Good old ship station. I love ship station. Yeah, right. So, so and ship station make my life so much easier. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's really cool. And I think, you know, in this day and age, like you said, whether it's germs or just wanting, you know, a lot of boxes have their own rules with chalk. Also, so if you're someone that travels or, you know, you, you just want to, you know, get a workout at a standard gym or a hotel gym and they don't have chalk there, an easy way, and you throw it in your bag, it's got a carabiner, so you can just hook it. Most of our bags these days have something to hook that on. Have you had any trouble like traveling with it ever? No, which is so crazy. Like, because, and you saw that chalk vial. I mean, look, I'm not going to travel with drugs, but if I were, it would be inside a grit stick. So maybe... <laughs> You have a secondary market. I'm just saying. Well, I, I always joke about that. I was like, if I really wanted to make money, I know how. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, if you're going to, you might as well be obvious about it. I think that way, you know, boom. Yeah, it's just chalk. And TSA agents these days understand what CrossFit is. And like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I have had and I know several people that I've traveled with it. And uh, I've traveled. i I travel a lot for events. So I've, you know, stuck, I've had boxes of those um, little vials, chalk vials in my suitcase went right through TSA. No, no issue. Yeah. yeah. They're like this, this girl can't, but she wouldn't be, she'd be hiding this if it were drugs, but meanwhile, that's yeah. what you do. So, yeah. and do you own this a hundred percent? I do. I, um, I started the company with uh, money I had saved um, from my nursing career. And uh, so, yeah, I don't have any investors. I didn't take out any loans from a bank or anything. So 100% me. That's awesome. That's awesome. What, what has, when, when people see this, what's their initial impression? Um, they, it, it, it's, it's, Depends really, but a lot of times it's 
Oh, that's such a great idea. Like, it's so simple. Like, why was it not like, are you sure there's not there's nothing out there like this? Nobody's thought of that. Like, how did nobody think of that before? You know, because it's such a simple concept, but you know, it's it's just a thought, you know. So, so yeah. So oftentimes it's when are you gonna be on Shark Tank? <laughs> but you don't want to do something like that, do you? Um, actually, fun, all right. Fun fact about Cassandra is Shark Tank is my absolute favorite show. I've watched it since I was a little girl. Hence, you know, my whole inventor brain. Um, yeah, so I actually applied last year. I got through the first couple rounds, but didn't make it to the actual where they fly you out to LA and you present and you pitch in front of the producers. But I had to make a whole pitch video and send that in. And yeah. Let me guess. You're trying to get Damon John because he's got all the CrossFits, right? Yeah, he, he would be perfect. He's my shark. It even, it's on my, I'm not going to show you my vision board, but it is on my vision board. Well, I've, I've got two friends that have been on Shark Tank. One had a great experience. One had a less than stellar experience. And it's, you know, not about experiences, but I think you, you obviously know this probably better than I do. It's like, okay, they invest. And now all of a sudden things may change. You're giving up a percentage. So, you know, I don't know if you know Dale King, Doc That's- Spartan. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he was on Shark Tank very successfully. His company is still doing great. I mean, look at me. Look how youthful I look, Cassandra. I mean, this is all Doc Spartan. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's amazing, you know. That one of youth. It is the fountain of youth, the coffee scrub. Um, but he had a great experience. And then I had a friend, the, the owners of a company that was called The Natural Grip back in the day, teamed up with Hershevec, you know, and it was successful. But at the same time, it just, it can cripple your business if you're not prepared. So I'm sure you're doing all the right things, but let me, you know, you are successful already. What, what benefit do you see in bringing on somebody like that? Uh, I think it would just, I would, I mean, I would ideally like my, my vision for the grit stick is to be able to have like it manufactured to the point where I'm not having to, you know, assemble them all myself. And, you know, so to be able to have a, you know, a warehouse where everything's manufactured and um, shipped out at, at that point, you know, and so I think, you know, obviously having a shark on board would help with getting that sort of being able to have that sort of inventory and um, just equipment that would be needed uh, and things like that. So. Yeah, I'm sure it. I'm sure it's helpful. What um, what are some other things that you're? Are, are, can you say? Are you working on anything else in the, at least in the fitness space? Yes, I'm working on a few things. Um, are you allowed to tell us? Is this breaking news? Is this a, you know, first time people will hear about it? Uh, me, yes, yes. So, <laughs> so. Uh, I am, I'm working on, always working on improving, you know, quality improvement, listening to my customers. Like I want to make my customers as happy as possible, you know, and I know you can't make everyone happy, but it is my goal to always work on quality improvement. So a few things I have done with this stick since my first launch is I've actually changed the size of the mesh screen holes. So actually having a little bigger holes. So the chalk comes out. A little bit easier. I've um, implemented the plug cap, which helps with um, the residual. Ch- if you're really like, because these things are very durable, they're aluminum, they're very durable. The caps are very durable. Um, fun fact for all of our people out there that um, this would be a fun fact, but it's <laughs> the caps are uh, repurposed uh, 35 millimeter rifle scope cap covers oh wow okay so yeah so they're very durable but anyways if you're getting rough and tough with it uh you do have the potential to have like the residual chalk in the top so that if you were not paying attention and you just it, you could get like a lebron james situation but the um plug cap helps with that so implemented that uh, but also working on some other chalk options because you know you know being in this world, everybody has their chalk preferences. And some people like the chalk blocks better, like an actual chalk where they can, 
rub it on their hands. So, yeah, versus the powder. Yes. So I'm working on um, targeting that population with uh, another, just some making some design changes. Uh, so with that, and then within the fitness industry too, it's, I also have another product that I'm working on that's completely not chalk related. So I'm not going to talk about that one yet, but I do have something else in the works and it's more, um, snack food related. Oh, all right. I like snacks. Everyone. I like snacks. So yeah, I'm interested in, I will definitely like to try that out. So, but with the grit stick, I remember when I saw you, we met in Austin at the Rogue Invitational. Of course, I give business advice, even if people don't want business advice, because that's the entrepreneurial brain we have, right? And my my advice was right now, this is a one-time purchase. You need to have a subscription model to the chalk. Has that been implemented? Have you, Did you listen to my idea? And if so, I'm now your shark and I want 10% of your company. <laughs> So the subscription model, no, I have not yet because that's another thing that I, with my product, I kind of, I was working on making it, you know, always looking at the quality, you know, wanted to make sure people are happy with it. Well, with the chalk vial, like that was the whole getting the, you know, return customer with people buying the refills because I, I sell the refills online. However, the thing is, is, and I, this is a issue I didn't see, like when I was first implementing this, the vials are lasting so long, yeah. because you're not wasting the chalk. It's going... Uh -huh. The only place it's going is the place it's supposed to go, which is on your hands. Whereas, you know, when you have your chalk blocks, like half of it, you know, you, you maybe use really of your total chalk block, you maybe use like, what would you say? Like 30% of it when everything else it goes elsewhere. Oh yeah. If you, if you use it, I mean, people waste it for sure. I mean, yeah. in, in general, I think CrossFit is over chalk. I mean, a chalk block should literally be like, a line on each hand, but people will, that we were just joking in our coaches development group. Cause I judged the CrossFit games and Mal O'Brien, I was judging her, you know, the CrossFit games is a little different. Do whatever you want. You're the fittest in the world, but she comes out covered in chalk and I'm judging. So I'm wearing like a blue shirt and black pants. And she like shakes my hand. And I'm like, now I have chalk all over me. Like I'm covered in chalk from just that, and I'm like, what do I do with this hand now? Like, so I'm like wiping it off. But yes, cross, CrossFitters at the box every day pretend to be games athletes. It's like, no, Mal O'Brien was probably doing the handstand walk. She needed the chalk. You are doing a set of pull-ups. Let's be a little more deliberate with how much chalk you use. So how long are you finding your vial lasts? Um, and like myself, like I told you, I'm a chalk monster. Mine lasts me, like one vial lasts me like, two to three months. Yeah. Okay. So we need to change that. We need to get it. So they're running out every day. Yeah. One time use one time use. Well, or how about, or they order the grit stick and it comes with a sample of chalk. Oh, so the thing is, is I sell a bundle on my site. So okay. rarely, rarely do I ever just sell a grit stick. So generally, um, people will buy the bundle or they'll buy the grit stick and then like the chalk monster bundle, which is six refills. So rarely do I ever just sell a grit stick. So generally like a lifetime supply of chalk for them. Six, six, six refills where it lasts you like two years, you'll yeah. be good. You'll be good for like two years. So it's really, and that's the thing is like, people are like, well, I can buy a block of chalk for like, oh. Well, let's, I won't even go into the talk about chalk prices as. Has it gone up substantially over the years? I don't know anything about it. Oh my gosh. Just within the last, just with inflation, just within the last six, seven months, like it's crazy. It is insane. So where do you get your chalk for the grit stick? You're not making chalk, are you? No. So I get my chalk from, I originally was getting it from Brazil, but because of all of the chalk issues, they kind of went under that company um because they used to sell 22 gallon buckets that i would just buy oh wow um a really really great price uh point and then 
they kind of went under with all everything. They only sell one pound buckets now. And so now I get my, actually get my chalk from New Jersey and it's pure magnesium carbonate. It's like really good stuff, but it does come, it is US made. So that's we have four yeah. states involved in every grit stick. Yeah. And five, assuming, you know, someone in a different state purchases. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, as a, as a small business, is it more expensive to be made in America? I'm so glad you asked that because that's uh, something I, I meant to mention earlier. But so with, um, I had a lot of help from my machinist. Um, he's actually a family friend. He's my dad's best friend from high school. Uh, brilliant man. He actually has several patents himself, but he helped me redesign from my original CAD drawings that my uh, product engineer drew up for me. So he helped me like redesign this whole thing. Um, and I spent hours and hours and hours researching, just like getting parts, these little parts that would actually, it brought down my cost per unit. I was able to get it down to less than what it was costing me in China. For wow. Those. So some research there now are, are you know, you, when you showed us this, there's probably like five or six parts to the grid stick. Are any of the parts harder to get? So are you sometimes being held up by, say, the carabiner or the plug or the vial? Like, do Are any of those harder to get in the States? Um, so actually, another fun fact. It's just giving you all so many fun facts. It's hard to, you know, people want to be an entrepreneur. This is what it comes down to. Yeah. So fun fact is that... The rifle scope cat covers, you cannot find US made scope cat covers. So where do you, where do you get them? What country are they from? So these are actually from China, the caps. So all 99% of it's made in the US. Yeah. But then just to out, have you considered trying to get those made or, or built in the US? Yeah. So in order to have like the cost of a mold, um, to have your own mold made is anywhere between like for something this, like just like for this carabiner strap, for example, would be like 20 grand. Wow. Something more complex, like the cap that has the flip and the spring and all of that is probably, you're probably looking at anywhere between 30 and 50 grand, maybe more. Now that was two, that was three and a half years ago that I was researching that. So it could be even more at this point, probably more. Wow. Yeah. You know, I think this just goes to show like what, you know, somebody sees the grit stick and they think, you know, simple in design execution, but two three years. And it sounds to me like it's a constant evolution as well. And the best entrepreneurs are always listening to their market and, and trying to make it better. All the feedback that you've implemented, what's been the biggest one that you've heard from, you know, a, a customer that you were like, that's a great idea. I need to make that change. Um, I think uh, having the bigger holes in the mesh screen. People um, just struggling to get the chalk out when you first put it out there. Yeah. And I think, I think, I think more of that issue was like people didn't realize how much like over chalking you don't really need. Like yeah. it, it, it does. It pours out like one shake, like pours out like, just the right amount, but you know, so it's like, but people over chalk for sure. So that, so that's, so I kind of like compromised and made, I made the holes a little bigger so that now you get, you get a good. Yeah. I remember when you poured some out, it was more than I needed, but it's also kind of one of those things where it's like, you got to give the people what they want, not necessarily what they need. In my opinion, this is a great, investment for affiliate owners, either A, to, to stock and sell because, you know, it's kind of like, it, I use jump ropes as a similar example where, sure, having a few jump ropes for your new people to try out is great, but ultimately you need your own jump rope if you're going to do CrossFit, right? Not for your preference as far as speed, length, handles, et cetera. And I would say the same should and could be held true for your chalk. It's just one of those things that you know, box owners have got accustomed to buying and a, there's always problem. I mean, a, it's a cost that they have to incur. And like you said, the price of chalk is not going down. It's, you know, going up just like the 
price of gas, right. but also it becomes a mess for them. Like most CrossFit affiliates, when they're being cleaned on a daily basis, 90% of that is due to chalk, mm-hmm. right? So if we can mitigate that and whether it's sell grit sticks at the front desk, or even I would, I would, as a box owner, you will save money in my opinion, tell, correct me if I'm wrong here, by giving a grit stick to every new member that comes in. Like, hey, here's a welcome package. Put your own sticker on it, right? Like, hey, here's the, you know, your affiliate sticker on there. And now it's like, hey, you got your own. That's that's a really nice value add. Well, and then and then the affiliates can sell the refills. Right. So now in the future, right. So now so what they're basically doing is giving a gift to a new member, which is, you know, provides a nice, you know, imagine you do that. Hey, someone's new to CrossFit. They come in and you're like, hey, by the way, one of the cool parts about CrossFit is we drop the weights, we we play loud music, but we also use chalk. So here we want to give you a gift. You're going to use this when you do things like pull-ups or touch a barbell. Some of you will want to do this for things like burpees. You know, do you, boo, right? But now, and, and again, this is going to last you two or three months. And then, you know, we sell these vials. So now an affiliate has essentially taken a, a cost and turned it into, you know, a, a revenue generator. Mm-hmm. What, what would an affiliate purchase your vials for? Um, so wholesale. So I do, I do a whole wholesale program. So depending on how many, you know, they buy, um, I, to, you know, a dollar 50 to $2 per vial. And then a retail is five bucks. And I think even that's a good price for them to reset. I mean, it's going to last, you know, they're only going to need to buy this three, four times a year max. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think you can bump that price up a little bit on the MSRP, like maybe like seven dollars. Yeah. I'm trying to make you more money here, Cassandra. I'm trying to help. I appreciate you. I'm trying to help. Appreciate Um, you as my shark. Yeah. See, you don't need Damon, John. You need me. You need, you know, Damon. I don't think he actually owns any affiliates, by the way. I think that's fake news. I think he's always talking about these affiliates he owns. And I don't know. I mean, this is going back years. I mean, I'm a big Shark Tank fan myself, but I remember they'd always be like, he owns five affiliates. I'm like, where are these affiliates, Damon? I don't know. I don't really know any of the names of them. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe he's an investor in some of the bigger ones in Manhattan, et cetera. Um, But, and and as as far as the the stick itself, can, can affiliate owners purchase those at a wholesale? Yes. I have a very, very good wholesale program where tell, me, tell us about it. We got you got tens of thousands of affiliate owners listening to every episode we put out. What do you want to say to them? So I mean, my wholesale program, and that that was part of the especially my passion for the sport and everything that was going on through COVID and you know everybody struggling within our industry. I wanted to be able to provide another, you know revenue stream for affiliates. So I developed my wholesale program and depending on how many sticks you buy, it's anywhere between 30 to 50% off that you get oh. for the stick. So, um, so yeah, if you buy enough, you can, it'd be 20 bucks a pop for these. Um, and then, I mean, you get somebody coming in doing your on-ramp and a membership, they're paying, you know, upwards of potentially $300 you put this in there and you've got a lifer and not to mention, you yeah. know, they feel special. Like now they're, you know, it's, they're a part of the cult, if you will. Right. Like they're strapping that on their bag. Their friends are like, what's this thing? Oh, it's chalk. And now they're showing chalk to their colleagues, their coworkers, they're sprinkling chalk around the office. Yeah. Right. And then all, you know, and then all of a sudden you, you, you've got new people. Like that's what affiliate owners don't yeah. understand about stuff like this. It's not about like the $20 sale. It's about, well, A, if I give this out, they feel a bigger part of my community, but also they're going to spend more money because they are going to use it. If you give it to them and tell them, hey, chalk is a part of this thing, they're going to use chalk Mm -hmm. and then they're going to need to buy vials. And all of a sudden, like I said, you have a cleaner affiliate and you have an income generator versus an expense. Mm -hmm. And I am doing customization. So if you want your logo on here, or your um, gym name or whatever, I do customization. So it's laser etched. It doesn't come off, but you can have advertising as well. 
you know, I'm oh. cooking this. Oh. I'm going to throw, I'm going to blow your mind. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to blow your mind. Here's what I'm telling you. Well, first of all, is there a limit? How many do they have to order if they're going to get it custom customized? MOQ for customization is a uh, 20. Now I know what MOQ is, but for the listeners, if they don't know, right. it sounds like they don't know. Uh, minimum order quantity. Minimum order quantity. That's what I was going to say. Minimum order quantity. Um, here's what you do. Are you ready? I feel like you should have a pen out to write this down. Okay. Now I'm just kidding. So if I had an affiliate, here's what I would do. You got entrepreneurs at affiliates, right? Like restaurant owners, uh, veterinarians, doctors, et cetera. Hey, you want to be the chalk sponsor? I'll put your name on every grit stick. By the way, we give one of these out to every new member. All you have to do is cover the cost of the grit stick. Boom. Look at that. Look what I've done. Mm -hmm. 10,099% of the company. Are you in? $10,000 right here investment. I own 99%. You keep 1%. Your mom's on board. I will hire her. Wait, you no, guys, no royalty, no royalty deal. And I get, yes. And, oh. and I get a percentage of each perpetual, whatever, you know, um, but that's a good idea, right? That is a really good idea. Yeah. No. Put it, I mean, I, you, I don't think there's anything you would do differently, but if I'm a box owner and I'm hearing this, I'm just trying to like, I'm, I'm an affiliate owner at heart, right? Like that's how I look at it. And I'm like, when I had my affiliates, I mean, I still have the garage, but when I had my actual big affiliates, I had chiropractors, you know, lots of entrepreneurs where if you put their logo on here and you can have multiple logos, you know, hey, we're going to do a new order every quarter, you know, secure your, you know, you can have four sponsors or whatever you can fit on there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a reasonable fee to be in front of somebody's face every time they work out. Yeah. So I think there's lots of good opportunities. My offer stands. Ten thousand dollars. If you you know, if you want to hit me up, you got my number. Shoot me a text. We can work out the details. We can work yeah. out the details offline. Yeah. Um, but you know, so where can people order this? So uh, directly from my website. So it's my website is uh, puregritfit.com. Puregritfit.com. So, mm -hmm. so you can order directly from my website. Uh, and I am also on social media. You can, uh, on my Instagram, it's grit underscore stick. I have all my links and everything there. And, you know, with all, all the amazing stuff they're doing with just being able to purchase right from Instagram. So it's all set yeah. up. So you can just go onto my Instagram and pick your color and, uh, yeah. So, so and yeah. The wholesaling is all through the site as well. Or is there a different, uh, uh website for that? Wholesaling is, uh, yeah, you just contact me through either the website or uh, uh, social media. Yeah, there's a contact us uh, mm -hmm. page on your website. But if someone yeah. shoots you a DM, you'll get back to them for that as well. Yep. So let her, let Cassandra know you heard about her and the company through Best Hour. And um, I think I think that's a great idea for, you know, for, for people to do. No discounts. You've already heard. You know, all you know, five states and all the work that goes into. I have a big pet peeve about people asking for discounts from other small business owners. Like, get out there, support her. If you're a box owner, you should want to support someone like Cassandra because, you know, she, she's part of the growth of this thing as well. The more people that see chalk, the more people that see products like this, the more we all grow. And again, this is just an opportunity. Use this as an opportunity to grow the value of your box. But also, like I said, it's going to keep the place clean and it's going to be, keep people more invested in, in, in coming in. The more you can tie them into the affiliate through things like this, like make them feel a part of something, the longer term that, you know, it's not about the $20 you're spending for each one of these. It's that $20 can, can turn into months and months, if not years and years of membership. So. With that being said, that's really great. Am I going to see you at the CrossFit Games? Are you going to be there? Yes, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to be there. I don't know that I'll have a booth. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to have like a vending, a, a space in the vendors village or whatever. It's pretty pricey at the CrossFit Games these days. It's very pricey. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I definitely plan on being there. Um, it's just it's 
last year was my first time. I was like, it, it's just an amazing environment to be in. And like I said, I love the sport, the sport and it's just, it's just such a good community. So if anything, I'll just be there hanging out. I think that's the way to go. Go rogue, not, not, not the company rogue, but show yeah. up, you know, just sprinkling some, uh, chalk, you know, around and show I'll be people stick on my backpack. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you will let people know where you are, you know, yeah. via your social media and, and you have some good friends that have some, you know, cool stuff going. Like we talked about, uh, equip making, yeah. you know, products for adaptive athletes. So if you, you, if you do not know equip products, you need to go look them up because they are doing amazing things. Amazing things. Yeah. And I think, you know, if, if, if you truly want to be innovative in this space and, and really growing your box, you, you want to, you know, show the adaptive world out there, Hey, you can do this too. I mean, we're obviously seeing it with the competitions expanding and, you know, more and more uh, categories being put in there. We had Kevin Ogar on, you know, a couple of weeks ago and, awesome. you know, talking about that, but yeah, Quip makes great products. You know, a lot of these adaptive athletes, I remember, teaching a level one nearly 10 years ago. And the guy came in with like a chain for his arm, you know, cause he, he was literally blown up in a war and he had no limbs and he's like making this stuff himself. So it's nice to see companies supporting that and making it easier for, for adaptive athletes to participate. So I think that's a, that's a, a great company as well. So, you know, maybe team up with them, hang out in there. And if we're there, we will definitely give you a shout out and make sure, you know, people know where to find you. Okay. Anything else you want to, share while you're on here in front of uh, millions of listeners? <laughs> no, just that I am so incredibly grateful and honored to be on here. And I'm so glad I met you at uh, the invitation in Texas, Texas. And, you know, I, I just, that's another thing I love about this community is how willing and supportive everyone is of each other, you know, and we just want to, we want to grow and we want to see others grow and succeed. And the best way, like you just said, to do that is by helping each other out. So, yeah, that's, you know, I think it's, you know, it's easy to find the cheapest of anything on Amazon and all these websites. And that's great. Like I get it. Not every box owner you know, has a, you know, completely disposable income, but if you're going to, you know, if you're going to spend money, spend it and, and, you know, and, and help other small business owners grow and, and benefit because the more we all grow, you know, the more we all grow and we know we need chalk. That's yeah. not going to change in the CrossFit world. Like we need chalk. So why not, you know, figure out a way to make it work for your affiliate. I think I laid it out. I think I laid the blueprint out, Cassandra. You did a pretty good job, man. That was pretty good, right? Am I? I'm, I'm gonna, pretty impressed. <laughs> final offer, 10,098%. You, you, you run a hard bargain. I'm going down a percentage. Um, your mom has to work for free, though. Is that okay? <laughs> There's no more payment for mama. Um, but you're not far away, so I can come over. I can crack that whip on her, right? Is she in well, Colorado, too? Well, you could help. You could no, no, no. I think you misunderstood. I'm the shark. I don't help. I, I demand. I demand. I demand a little more work out of Mama Dick over there. Um, is she is she in Loveland also? Uh, Longmont. Long. OK, so I think not it might actually be closer to me than uh, Loveland. Yeah, it, it is. But I'm not giving you an address. No. <laughs> I can find her. I can find her. We got to get you over to the box here, though. Do a little demo. I think this is one of those products, too, where you, you bring it, you know, over to the affiliate. So if you're in the I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. You willing to travel around Colorado if people oh, reach I, out? Yes, I do all the time. And I'm I'm in our vet all the time. I have family there. So Well, hit, hit up Ralston Creek. I think this is definitely one of those products. And especially when you have that snack ready. I want some of those. I don't know what it is, but it sounds delicious. Yes, I can let you. I'll let you uh, be a taste tester. All right. You got it. I'm a good taste tester because I really like everything. So you're going to get a thumbs up for me as long as it's food. But yeah, if you're in the Colorado area, certainly reach out um, via social media, you know, to, to show up at the box. And I'm sure, you know, you know, if you're near Madison for any of the events, I know I've seen you traveling to obviously the Rogue and Maria Wadapalooza this year as well. I was at Wadapalooza, I was at Wheel Walk Games, I was at CrossFit Games, and I was at the Rogue Invitational. So yeah. All the big ones, all the big ones. All over, yep. Yeah. So it's been really great chatting with you, and I look forward to seeing you in, uh, in a couple months in uh, Madison. All right, sounds good. 
Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.